Hello YouTube, this is Frodo. What you see here is my app, which stands for Autocrafter Powered Parallel Processor. Or if you're British, then you can call it T, the Everything Autocrafter. It's a truly universal factory that allows me to keep my storage fully stocked. Completely automatic, like magic, the lowest row in the storage will always be completely full and if anything is missing, I'll autocraft it. And unlike other autocrafter setups, it doesn't rely on special conditions. This is not like everything you can craft from wood or everything you can craft from wood and iron, but this system here allows you to set up anything. So for example, if I wanted to craft whatever, warped fence gates, then I would just have to find an empty crafter slot, set up the ingredients, sticks are already there, I would have to add warped wood, at some point, probably auto-crafted from warped locks, set up an auto-crafter here, and then the chest would fill up with warped fence gates. So these are the cliff notes of the system. It's seamlessly integrated into a storage. Basically, this will be the user interface. All of the redstone will be hidden. And this is a very normal storage with item filters for all three rows. And the top two rows have just an item filter but the lowest row has a redstone system to keep the chests stocked. And if I want to sell stuff, then I can just put in a new shulker box and it will grab the TNT from these chests and fill up the new shulker box that I can take to my shop. You could connect this to almost every storage type, including multi-item sorters, as long as you have enough room to fit a redstone at the bottom. This storage here does contain a filter and an input chest with a shulker box unloader and the shulker box filter, so shulker box unloaders will be unloaded here. Items go directly to storage. But apart from that, it's very simple. The system needs to be fast. I don't want to wait days until the storage is full. Therefore, all items are crafted in parallel. So let's take out a few items here. And watch our crafters using free can. There we go. All of the items that are missing are crafted as long as we have the ingredients. This storage has 22 outer crafters down here. One for each chest and all can fire at the same time. Crafting happens once every four seconds because the hoppers on top need time to fill up the outer crafters. But there are limits in the ingredient supply. For example, if I craft droppers, observers and pistons, then the cobble supply will limit the speed a bit. Also, planks can be a bottleneck for chests, barrels, pistons and note blocks. So, we are not quite there every 4 seconds, but the system still is pretty fast. And after maybe 2 or 3 hours, pretty much all of the chests are filled. And maybe some of the chests will still lag behind. The ingredients go from left to right, so these items here on the right might be a bit later. For example, droppers might lag a bit because the cobble was used to craft pistons and observers. Also, all ingredients are stuck just one time. Here are shulker box unloaders. And we have one shulker box unloader for each of the ingredients. And of course, some of the items are crafted. Here I craft redstone blocks to redstone dust, iron blocks to iron ingots. But again, there's only one supply for redstone dust, only one supply for iron ingots for all of the crafters in the system. Also, there's pretty much no restriction what you can craft. I have a bit of a tough spot with unstackables because we can't filter them out using item filters. So at this moment, I have two unstackables on the outside for shulker boxes and for minecarts. But apart from that, you could set up any recipe with any ingredient by just configuring the system. The system is not especially sensitive to unloading. However, because of the items in the water stream, you don't want a partial loading. So if only part of the water streams are loaded, then items might despawn. So I use a chunk loader at the bottom to load the system, which also allows me to keep it running in the background until all of the chests are full. I also believe it's pretty safe. If something breaks, for example, you run out of one ingredient, then you'll have a few ingredients circling, but nothing else, nothing bad happens. And of course, I'm just a bit of terraforming away from completely hiding the system. So all of this is intentionally below the ground level and I will just have to build a roof to terraform a bit above and then nothing of this will be visible. 
There is certainly room for improvement, especially it's possible to compact the system. But I wanted to spread out the stuff, like these types of machines are over there, these types of machines are over there, the other ones over there, for two reasons. A. I can change things if necessary. And that was a good decision. I had to refactor this about three times so far. After building it for the first time, I rebuilt all of this part here in the back. But now I believe it's stable. And the other reason, of course, is you guys have a much better idea of what's going on if I tell, okay, this is where I have the basic ingredients, this is where I have the crafted ingredients, and so on. So this video is an overview over the system. It explains how I determine which items need to be crafted and how the factory works on a very basic level. In my last video, I already described all of the autocrafter setups that I use in here and here to craft ingredients and to craft dispensers. And there will be more videos explaining the more technical parts, especially how the ingredient supply works and how you can configure the system with different recipes and ingredients. Let's head to creative and see what's going on. And I'll start with a general idea. I have a one white tileable way to determine if the chests, or rather the hoppers behind the chests, are full, the chests in the lowest row. There's a four second clock behind the storage that will send a redstone pulse down this observer line if the chest is not full. And this means at the bottom we get a signal every four seconds for each slice where we need to craft items. And we send that pulse into a crafter, a crafter that is pre-filled with the correct ingredients, here for example for droppers. But of course we must make sure that the crafter is stocked, because if we would run out of cobble, then another item would get into the filter and clog up the system. So what we do, here's some magic redstone that on one side blocks off the signal if the hopper is below a certain amount of items. So if the hopper starts to run empty, we will lift off this piston and break the signal chain to the auto crafter. And on the other side, we also have a bit of redstone to determine if the crafter needs restocking. And for this we use signal strength. For signal strength under 14, we request the ingredients. So we request copper and redstone dust in this case. And under 13, we block the further crafting. And for the ingredients, we have a water stream going round and round. So let's start out over the crafter. So all of the ingredients will go over the crafter and refill them if necessary. The ingredients that are not picked up because I have no way to tell which ingredients are missing. I just know from the signal strength that some are missing. The ingredients go back and these ingredients will go back to an ingredient station and there is an item filter that will suck up the ingredients. So for example, this slice here is redstone. If redstone arrives here, it will be sucked out of the water stream. And then the ingredients go round again and over item filters. And this basically means if, for example, redstone arrives back here, then all of these hoppers must be full. Whenever the status of this item filter here changes, and this is the copper bulb item filter, then we will stop the ingredient station dropping in into items. So let's do a full cycle for one of the simplest items that we can do, which are minecarts. And I will call in the craft manually, like so. There comes the minecart. So we are still at signal strength 14. We have the lower of the lines here. Nothing happens and we will need to craft a couple of times to remove 23 ingredients. There we go. Now the signal strength has dropped to 13. And this means we start requesting the ingredients. So here we have the line that goes to our iron supplier. We get iron in the water stream. But we continue to craft because we still have plenty of room in the hopper. Craft some more. Let's block the item supply for a moment. And we are at level 13, we are still crafting. But if we continue to craft, at one point, we'll have removed more than 46 items. And this means the signal strength goes down to 12. And that means this block is lifted. But the items are already in the water stream. So iron is coming in big time. Hopefully, by the time this hopper runs dry, we already have the fresh items here and the hopper will be, well, not completely full, but full enough to continue crafting. Now there are two cases. One case is the signal strength does drop to 12. In this case, the crafting will be blocked until the hopper will be full. 
The other case is that finally the chest will be full. We no longer need minecarts, of course we have plenty of them now. And that means the iron supply will circle a bit longer. We'll shut off the iron supply. And now because I blocked the system for a moment, I have much more iron in there at a time than I usually would. But the item filters are a bit faster than the clock that puts the item into the water stream. So we will always be able to filter out all of the ingredients that we don't need. And after a short time, all of the iron is once more collected. So on top we have a shulker box unloader or a crafter that supplies us with new items. But here we stop them if anything is in here. And this means the item filter will always have capacity to put items back in here. And nothing despawns. Now for the ingredients we have three blocks, which I would call the basic ones on this side, the simple crafted on this side and the complex crafted on the last side. So the basic ones are stuff like gunpowder and sand. So we just have a shulker unloader supplying the system. On the other side are the simple crafted, which means that we do need a crafting process, but it requires only one ingredient. I craft redstone blocks to redstone and iron blocks to iron ingots and gold blocks to gold ingots and gold nuggets. But I also craft logs. This is a shulker unloader full of logs to four ingredients, which are planks, slabs, crafting tables that we need for crafters and chests that we need for shulker boxes and hoppers. I use logs of one type throughout. So if I start with birch in this case, then of course I could change to oak logs, but it would require resetting all the filters and all the crafters that contain anything made out of birch. So I just pick one wood where I have plenty of and use that. I do not craft sticks because I have a raid farm and I have more sticks than I'll ever need. And the most complicated ingredients are the complex ones, which basically have custom crafting stations. The thing is, if I want to craft sticky pistons, then we need pistons as ingredients. And while it would be in theory possible to grab the pistons from this storage here, to take them out of this chest, it would be a major hassle and probably require minecarts to move the items, which are noisy, laggy and not unload proof. So I decided to have just two crafters for the pistons. One regular crafter supplying my storage here and a second crafter supplying the ingredients. And this is a normal ingredient station with the same item filter and the same redstone logic. So if we get the request that we need pistons, this would be activating this observer here, then we put pistons into this water stream. Pistons are refilled using the auto crafter here and we stop auto crafting as anything is in here. That means we have 14 stacks of pistons plus one at least. But we also have room for the item filter to filter out pistons from the water stream. Of course, the top part is different. Instead of a shulker box unloader over there or a simple crafting station, we have a complex crafting process that needs, in this case, four ingredients. And so I use a crafting station very similar to the one over here with the same logic. So it has its own ingredient request system, which is this rail here. If we run out of ingredients, then this line will activate and request cobble, planks, iron and redstone. And again, here we have a locking system. So in the back, we just have a four second clock that runs all of the time. But here we have two ways to block the crafting process. Two blocks controlled by pistons that we can independently pull out of the path of the signal. One, if we have enough pistons in the dropper down there, so we don't need any more. And the other one, if the hopper on top is too empty, is below signal strength 13, then we will wait for the ingredients to arrive. So this means I can reasonably easy set up complex ingredients. And here, besides pistons, I use redstone torches for the repeaters and comparators. And I craft droppers for the crafters. Now, dispensers are a special case because I need to activate two crafters, as shown in my last video. And one has to be strongly powered. I couldn't really fit this into this one tileable system over here. So I put into two crafters here, one crafting the bows and the other one crafting the dispensers. This works nicely, but of course the dispensers go into the ingredient border stream. So I have set up an item filter to filter out the dispensers. If I had to build this again, 
I would build this crafting station over here or maybe on the other side and put the dispensers directly into the water stream leading to the storage. So that's the rundown of the system. And as I said, the ingredient supply will be explained in a different video. Otherwise this one would get too long. But let's have a closer look at the crafting site. So here's the slice. And the user interface is basically what you see, which is just a normal storage system with the ability to put in a shulker and have it filled automatically. And I put some trap drawers over to hide the hole. And on top, we have two very normal solder slices using my copper pulp filters. The last row is also an item filter, but we have a bit of additional redstone here below. At the back, I have a clock that fires once every four seconds. This clock is read by the observer going into this redstone dust. But this redstone dust is also powered by reading this hopper here. So let's say this chest is completely full. Then we get a redstone signal strength of 15. This observer does change nothing in the signal strength over here. However, if we take out anything here, so this hopper is no longer full, then we have signal strength 14, and each activation of the node block changes the redstone signal on this observer. This redstone block here makes sure that the signal is at least 14, which makes the whole thing one white tileable. Because now if this can only change 1 to 15, and this will not affect the neighboring slice. So if this hopper is not full, every 4 seconds this observer will read the change, and then we can relay the signal down. This will activate this node block. The observer reads the node block, sends the signal into a solid block, activates the next node block, and so on. And I use this to hide the redstone underground, because I basically want to have my storage here, and all of this should be below surface level. Now it would be possible to distribute the signals to separate autocrafters. Like so, we have an autocrafter for golden carrots, we have an autocrafter for scaffolding, and we have the ingredients on top here. You could use powered rails to distribute the signal. In some cases, you could even use powered rails to send the signal to a completely different point and have your autocrafters all over the place. And this makes perfect sense for items that have unique ingredients. For example, if you don't want to autocraft TNT, then no other contraption needs paper or gunpowder. And we can set it up like this. We have just two Ashaka box unloaders feeding into one autocrafter. And on the way, we craft the gunpowder to paper. However, this requires you in advance to know what you want to craft. Let's say you want to add TNT. Now suddenly you would need the gunpowder for something else. But if you've built the crafters this way, then perhaps you might need another shulker box unloader for gunpowder. So I wanted the system to make the ingredient supply very flexible and generic. And of course many ingredients are used by many recipes in the first place. Like redstone dust that is used by half of these items. So I used the pre-filled crafter idea in a different way, because I only want to build one shulker box unloader providing redstone dust, one shulker box unloader providing iron ingots and so on. I have created two shulker unloaders for cobble, but this is for performance reasons, otherwise the cobble in supply would be a major bottleneck. And I have one water stream supplying all of the crafters, or rather the hoppers on top of them, with the necessary ingredients. And of course I have a magic system, that triggers which ingredients are put into the water stream, which basically, if the hopper runs low, then we'll have a redstone clock. The redstone clock will activate rails. The rails will have observers observing the change and relaying the signal to other rails here at the bottom. But here is how we make sure that our hoppers don't break. And this is actually a, an AB tileable system. So here's a small slice where you can see both sides. So we use that decorated pots with items that stack to 16 because they are rather easy to fill. So here we need to put in 14 items to get signal strength 13. Or here we need to put in 15 to get 14. You could also use a lectern with a book with 15 pages. And now we distribute the signal alternatingly up and down. So every second signal will go up. Then we'll bring in the gateway signal and compare to that. And at the bottom we do the same. And then we use pistons to pull out the blocks in the back. At the bottom we have to use an AB tileable configuration. We can't move the observers because they would give a pulse if we move them back. This would be the observer reading the node block with the signal coming from above. But right now this block is pulled up so we can't craft anything. And on the other side we do the same. We use a one wide tileable system using slime and honey blocks to move these observers. So whenever the signal is too low, like in this case in all four hoppers, 
then we'll activate this observer clock and this will request ingredients. So this is the general idea. But I think you now have a pretty good idea how this works. The system works very satisfactory for me. So far I didn't have any issues with unloading. And of course I have plenty of ideas how to improve that. But as a version 1.0 I am perfectly happy. So this runs perfectly in survival now. I am really happy about this. It took me a very long time to design this. The general idea was easy enough, but to get all of the little details right, it was quite a process. So please leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please leave a comment if you have any questions. And please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.